morning, Berlin. Good morning, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good morning Natalie. Yes. Uh, we've been working together now for uh, like half a year already. Yeah. And as you are a non-professional piano player or yeah, somewhat professional <laughs> already, yeah. but you also work as a lawyer, yeah. I would be very interested to know what you do and also for those who don't know you yet, please just introduce yourself. Who um, are you and what do you do? Yes, um, I'm a lawyer by day and um, in between being a lawyer, I <laughs> play the piano a lot. Um, I took it up some time ago. Um, I took it up about over two years ago again. I used to play when I was young. Mm -hmm. um, I started at age eight and I kept having lessons and lessons until I had to go away to study, to study law. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I stopped and I never took it up again for over 30 years till about over two years ago. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, interesting. And of course, I am a musician for all my life. Yeah. But I would be interested, why is the piano so important for you? What yeah. does it give you in your daily life that yeah. you haven't found anywhere else so far? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure what it gives me and why I do it, but um, what I do is I find great joy in um, continuing to learn the piano and I find great joy in playing mm -hmm. pieces that sound really nice. <laughs> and, um, and I find a lot of satisfaction in improving and I think playing the piano is something that, that's really rewarding. Um, if you put like work in it and you work the right way, then you'll find that you'll, you'll get somewhere and you know, you'll, you'll improve and that's very satisfying. You're someone who also likes challenges yes. and you like to challenge yourself <laughs> yes. with the piano playing. Um, is it also some kind of just sporty exercise for you that you feel like um, you have something, you know, you do with diligence every single day? Um, this kind of discipline aspect of it that, that makes you like practicing? Um, I don't really feel like I need discipline at all. Somehow I feel like it's more an obsession because I, I wake up and I just go to the piano to practice. And um, of course, I try to practice a little bit before going to bed as well. And um, yeah, I think it's just, I think I find it in that way, in a way, it's satisfying because there's so much to learn and so much to improve and it's it's something that you work towards and I think that that's, yeah, I, I like that challenge. Um, yeah, in a way, it's like sports and, and, and how you keep improving, um, how you do something and there's no end really to it and that's also good because you mm -hmm. reach a goal and then you go, okay, that's it, yeah. right. <laughs> Learning the piano is really a lifelong journey. Yeah, correct. And you can always improve in some areas. Yeah. Are you someone uh, who also likes to go to concerts and listen to others or is it for you mainly the aspect of spending time with yourself and exploring music or do you also play with others and how yeah. how has music been so far? Do you share it with people, with, with your friends, with your family or is it something that you explore on your own more or less? It started as something I explore on my own. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, when I started again, I was a very nervous piano player. I'd even, um, you know, stop playing if my husband walked near the piano. So, but I think slowly I, I kind of started getting more confident. I also started playing for other people and that really helped a lot. And, and I was joining groups of friends on Zoom and we play for each other regularly. Mm -hmm. And that really helps, yeah. Mm -hmm. How is it for you because we have uh, our live workshop here now, how is it for you now when you have several people here listening yeah. to you while you're playing, but also while you're working with me on something. How does that make you feel? Is it still that you're very nervous? If so, does it hold you back to expressing yourself? If not, why do you think it changed? And if <laughs> you're nervous um, and maybe you're nervous and you're still able to express, like how is that experience nowadays if you're uh. here sharing music with many others? One thing's for sure, I'm very much less nervous now. It's very much less. I, 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 I used to, my hands used to shake and they used to feel numb and I couldn't, I didn't know what was happening. But um, now I think I'm more composed uh, when playing for people. I still feel slightly nervous. Sometimes I don't think about it, I just think about playing. And then when I remember, oh, there's a, lot, a group of people here and then I start feeling a bit nervous. But it's generally much um, almost enjoyable, mm -hmm. <laughs> almost. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Nice. You know, what are your 
goals for the um, next years and uh, where do you want to keep learning the piano? Or is there some specific repertoire that you like to explore? I mean, the benefits of not having the pressure or not going on stage or something is that you can really 100% choose yeah. what way to move, which repertoire you want to learn. Is there something that fascinates you above anything else? I like the repertoire I'm playing now, so I'll just probably keep learning pieces that I, I love. And I think the joy of playing now, as opposed to when I was young, is that now I can try and play pieces that I like to listen to. Because when you're young, you get assigned pieces that are good for you, rather than good to listen to. So now it's li uh, playing pieces that I love to listen to, so I'm really enjoying that a lot. If you view your own progress now yeah. in the last mm. two years, because now you're playing uh, Beethoven Sonata, you're learning the Ravel Sonatine, for example, you're playing very well already Bach Predits and Fugues. Do you have any advice for other amateur mm -hmm. pianists, who are maybe rather at the start, on how to find that confidence that it's possible to improve? Yeah, my advice is uh, if you you want to, and you know, if you 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 like to play the piano, or you'd like to learn, or you've learned and stopped, and you'd like to take it out again, just do it. It's really really good fun. It's really rewarding. It's really satisfying. And um, if you do it, then find someone like Aaron to help <laughs> you with your journey. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and, and another thing, how do you deal with frustration along the way? If you mm. feel, okay, right now I'm just not progressing the way I would like to. Somehow I practice for hours, things are not really moving. How do you deal with that and how do you overcome that? With frustration, I, that's inevitable in any uh, when you're learning anything and certain people have difficulties with different areas and different people have different areas that they find frustrating. But I'd suggest that um, find ways and means to overcome it. And of course, um, I think I had most the most frustration before I had any teacher. Mm. And then that what made me um, like look for a teacher because when you play and um, and I, I, I thought I could teach myself and, and learn myself, but you really do need someone to listen to you and, and see how and it suggests how to overcome, you know, the barriers that you face in playing and uh, technical and also other barriers when you play the piano. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so thank you for being here, mm -hmm. Natalie. Thank you, thank you for watching too. And if you also want to explore how to yeah, make progress as an amateur, you can apply for a first free lesson at yes. aaronpilson.com <laughs> slash academy. Definitely do it. And we just find out <laughs> you know, if I can help you and how especially and then maybe you're here also very soon in Berlin working with me and also maybe with Natalie on your piano skills. So see you soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and see you again in the next video.